A man that have multiple wives is not out here trying to show everybody who he got. I wanna show you all, cause you looking so fine. A man who have multiple wives is not prancing around the internet posting a thousand pictures with women. That is just unethical, it's not cool, and it shows that that man is immature. Because as a man, you're supposed to protect the image of your wives. Hey guys, before we continue, I found that 94% of you who watch these videos are not subscribed. Click that subscribe button to support truth and click the like button to keep these videos circulated within the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for your support and truth. Let's get back to it. Ladies and gentlemen, if polygyny is sinful, then all of the patriarchs are burning in hell. That's not true, bro. But sin is incredibly expensive. The more sin that corrupted the bloodlines of men, the more penalties and restrictions on the flesh. You never hear these polygynists mention how incest was once lawful in the Old Testament. Perhaps we should continue it. No, you never hear them address the penalty men and women paid from the sin of Adam. Men once lived to be 900 years old but because of the incredible cost of sin even after the law of moses was instituted man's life was cut by 90 percent to at least 90 percent there are a plethora of other restrictions that have emerged on the flesh including monogamy but let's continue if polygyny is sinful then jacob would be wrong to have four wives. When you study the scriptures, Jacob had two wives, two concubines. Not only that, his concubines actually gave him more children than his wives. If polygyny is sinful, why would the Most High allow Solomon David and various other men of the Most High to have hundreds of wives, hundreds of concubines. Well, let's talk about that. Let's take a look at Deuteronomy 17:17, 17, 17, which says, A king shall not multiply wives for himself because they will turn his heart away from the Lord. And that's exactly what happened to King Solomon. And to a degree, King David. King Solomon's wives turned his heart toward Molech and Asherah. Um, Solomon's son, Rehoboam, paid the penalty for that. He lost nine tenths of the kingdom to his servant, Jeroboam. About ten generations later, under the reign of King Josiah of Judah, the Israelites finally learned again about the covenant with God. But the book had been lost for generations. Josiah died at the age of 39, and Jerusalem went into captivity. Of course, Christ died and rose again, and ever since, the law of polygyny is dead. Not one time in the Bible will you find scripture where the Most High said, and thou shalt not have multiple wives, as a commandment. It's nowhere in the book. It says so in 1 Corinthians 7. Verse 2, because of sexual immorality, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Under the old covenant, penalty for adultery was vicious. A man or a woman would be stoned to death. Why? Because the only way to cast the demon out was to kill this human host. The scriptures say, quote, so this evil will be cast from among you, unquote. The other option was for the Israelites to live holy, and this required them to consecrate themselves, the Israelite women particularly, from their impurity. The Most High commanded the men not to intermarry with the Canaanite women 
and they disobeyed. There was a penalty to pay for all of this sin. There are at least a thousand times as many demons on the earth. And they are transmitted through blood. They're going to tell you something is sinful when they have no scripture to back up anything. See, one thing about the Bible is that you must understand that the most high, he don't change. The most high don't change. You know, once he set things in motion, that's just the way we're going to be. Bruh, if that were the case, we would still be under the law of Moses, stoning people to death. If you break down the three major patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, prior to the law of Moses, then break down the law of Moses itself, law of grace, and the tribulation, which is to come, which says that God shall shorten the days because no flesh will be saved. No, no flesh will be acceptable. Legal sex will no longer be acceptable. That's what that scripture is talking about. Okay. Because sin progressively gets worse. Okay. You will see that sin is the common denominator here. God didn't change. Men changed as they progressed further down the rabbit hole of sin. Abraham married his half-sister Sarah. Isaac married his cousin Rebecca. Jacob married his cousins Rachel and Leah. Lot had sex with both of his daughters and produced children. Why? Because when God commanded Adam and Abraham to be fruitful and multiply, it was a privilege for men to marry within their bloodlines. There was so much risk and the unknown in traveling to another man's household and marrying a stranger there were just too many unknowns. You didn't know what was in his bloodline because a righteous man like Abraham would trace how much sin was in a woman's bloodline before advising his son rather or not to marry her. This is why Abraham sent his servant to the house of Bethuel to find a wife for Isaac. He understood why God commanded him to move from the Chaldeans and he was cautious in marrying outside of his bloodline because the fallen angels corrupted the bloodlines. And all of this was before the law of Moses. But these polygynists think 4,000 years accumulation of sin has made marriage better or the same as in the Old Testament. They're just disregarding the virginity and consecration of ancient Israelite women. From in the beginning, polygyny was, polygyny is today. You'll have a lot of people, they'll say, well, um, you know, it wasn't God's intended plan. You know, God's intended plan was monogamy. Actually, ladies and gentlemen, monogamy is a new concept. It's a new form of relationships which don't work. All you got to do is look around you today and look at monogamy. Let's talk about monogamy for a bit. Monogamy. Divorce. The majority of the divorces that are happening today are all under the guise of monogamy. But yet, people just can't seem to stay together. It seems like everybody's just getting divorced left and right. They get married for a year or two, and then they throw in the towel. Why? I thought monogamy is the way to go. No, nah, bruh. The failure of monogamy is the offspring of a multitude of generational curses. I don't have time to get into all of those curses. We talked about some of them earlier, but God had cursed the woman since Genesis 3. It is her ego that got her cursed. The mistake polygynists make is not realizing that seven women having to compete for one man is a generational curse. God in his infinite wisdom knew the woman was going to initiate divorce 80% of the time. He knew all the millions of aborted fetuses laid to waste by wicked, narcissistic women. How do you think they're just going to be rewarded with more marriage? We're in a fallen state. Once again, virginity and consecration of Israelite women is what pleased God. That's holiness. Marrying two, three, four women who got a body count of 40 men is the mixing of too much blood. Consecrations and sacrifices 
had to be made for that. This is why under the law of Moses, they had so many offerings and consecrations. You might say, well, what about the blood of Jesus? 1 Corinthians 7, 2 says, To avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. The women outnumber the men because it's a generational curse. The woman has been paying for and replicating the sin of Eve since the beginning of time. Why is it that in a world full of monogamy, it seems like there's more whoredom? It seems like people are having sex all day. Everybody is engaging in sexual activity with multiple partners. Here, women are having sex with a thousand guys. Women and men over here are having sex all damn day. You have alternative sexual lifestyles. You got all sorts of stuff going on in this world under the system of monogamy. You got so many women that are single mothers. They have babies by different men, but none of them are married. Think about that. You got multiple men who got baby mamas, but none of these guys are husbands. This is all under a system that tells you that monogamy is the way. If monogamy is the way, why all single mothers are single and have no husbands, but they have all these kids to show. If monogamy is so great and so successful, why the divorce rate within the United States of America and all throughout the globe is at an all-time high? Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 through 45, Christ described the unclean spirit that leaves and returns with several more spirits wicked than himself. It says, so shall it also be with this wicked generation. Okay, so demons found a way to harbor or conceal themselves in the bloodlines of men. Under the law of Moses, men and women were stoned to death for adultery because the demon had to be cast out. But you had to kill this human host to do that. Under the law of grace, Christ is forgiving. But now he acts preemptively against sin because the condition of men and women have gotten worse. The scriptures say if a man even looks at a woman and lusts in his heart, he has committed adultery. This was not the case under the law of Moses. Yet men are no longer stoned to death for adultery because Christ said, ye without sin cast the first stone. So men are not instantly penalize for sin like under the law of Moses but there are more restrictions on the flesh because of the accumulation of sin in the generations since the law of Moses monogamy is so great and wonderful shouldn't everybody be happy why is it that it seems as if though every man that falls under the guise of monogamy end up in an affair on the side I mean if his wife is all he need and he's so madly in love why would he have a desire for another woman why would he have a craven for another woman if monogamy is the way and he's so madly in love why is it that he has a need for another woman because it's the nature of a man to deal with more than one woman the problem is in this culture they emasculated the man and they took away his birthright and the culture in which we live in as so-called Israelites, because all of you so-called black people, for lack of better words, you are the biblical Israelites. The culture in which we had was stripped from us. Our standards, the way we did things, our customs was all stripped from us. It was not stripped from us. Our people disobeyed the Most High and went into captivity. God warned the Israelites not to marry foreign women because they served other gods and he stopped accepting their sin offerings. He said it is better to obey than to sacrifice. Again, there is no polygyny without the law of Moses. The same way there is no incest because of the law of Moses. The way we dealt with our women stripped from us and we took on the way of the heathen. So today... We got the holidays, we got Christmas, we got Valentine's Day, we got all these different days in which we celebrate and participate in. But none of these days pretty much represent who we are as a people. So when it comes to relationships, they gave us monogamy, which is also population control. 
Now let's do some math. You know, I'm not really good at math, but I know how to count. One thing I realize is that in this culture, in this world, women outnumber men. Women outnumber men 25 to 1. So when you do the math and you really think about it, if every female had a husband, right? Every female, right? Well, you know what? Let's reverse that because we're doing math. If every man had a wife, every man, being that there are more women in the world than men, 25 to 1 now, that mean there will be millions upon millions of women single and they're going to die childless, lonely, and miserable. Okay, so again, this is the most high judging the woman. First and foremost, Proverbs 18.22 says, He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Christ used that same word, find, in reference to few who find eternal life. Finding a wife is just as scarce as finding eternal life. It's more complex than you just saying, oh, the women outnumber the men 25 to 1. Many of them will die alone. Look, Eve messed that up when she had sex with the fallen angel. That's why the Most High cursed her body with the monthly impurity. It was the mark of her fornication. 1 Corinthians 6, 18 says he who commits fornication sins against his own body. In Genesis 3, he said her desire shall be for her husband. So the curse of Eve is that the woman will always be in drought of a husband. And of all these women, how many of them are even wife material? Maybe one out of a thousand? And how many of the men actually follow Yah? Because that's all that matters, dude. For some odd reason, the Christian religion have this weird misconception that in this world, both men and women are equally numbered. It's not that way. And it's not that way for a reason because the Most High gave the man the command to be fruitful and multiply. And when you study the Bible and you see all the patriarchs, all of them had multiple wives. Multiple wives. But the Christian pastor, he's locked under monogamy, so he can't have multiple wives. And what's even more disturbing about the religion of Christianity is most of these so-called Christian pastors have multiple affairs on the side. They're always getting caught with another woman somewhere. Saying the Christian pastor is very vague. Again, there are few who find eternal life. So let's not champion polygyny because the Christian pastors are hypocrites. Polygyny is sin because the bloodlines are tainted and you need virgin women consecrated under the law of Moses to uphold the system of polygyny. I'm sure it won't be none of you. But see, in the, Christian of in the religion of Christianity, Christian pastors have to uphold the lie of promoting that polygyny is sinful because these are all 501c3 churches, which mean they get government benefits. And once you understand that religion is all government made and government supported, they're going to push an agenda of population control. Okay, that's just the devil playing both sides. Two wrongs don't make a right. See, you don't need more than one of something in order to make something. Just because the Most High took Adam, put him to sleep, and made a woman and formed a woman out of his rib does not mean you assume that that's the beginning of monogamy. That is not truth. You don't gain truth by just twisting or making something that is a story out to be truth in terms of, well, that's monogamy. That was God's intended plan. Let me make you understand that you don't really know how to read when it comes to the bible a lot of people think that the story of adam and eve is the beginning of civilization actually it's not because when you study the scriptures and you realize the story of adam and eve the most high 
made it clear for Adam to replenish the earth. To replenish the earth. Those of you who had a VCR back in the day, you know there is a feature to rewind. Which means if you're watching a movie, you can rewind. You can start it back from the beginning. You can replay. So anything with re literally means to do again. That's true. To repent is to return back to the Lord because we are pilgrims passing through. But keep listening. So when you think about replenish the earth, that means to fill the earth again. So Adam and Eve was not the first two people on this planet. Yes, they were, but keep going. That would make no logical sense. Because if you really study the scriptures, Eden was a small section. Eden was in the earth. There was people on the earth, even during the time of Adam and Eve. You don't believe me? <laughs> I'm glad you feel that way. But when you study Cain, Cain was marked by the Most High after he killed his brother Abel. And he was so afraid that somebody would harm him that the Most High put a mark on his head. And he said that anyone who pretty much come to Cain to try to harm him, they will pretty much be judged sevenfold or something like that. Now, if there was nobody else on the earth but Adam and Eve and his children, why would Cain be fearful for his life? Because people was on the earth. Oh, it gets a, it gets a little deeper now. Because we can say, clearly see by scripture, if you read your Bible, that Cain fled into the land of Nod. The Bible says there he knew his wife and she bore children for him. Now, if Adam and Eve were the only people on the earth and Cain is their son and he fled to the land of Nod, where did this mysterious woman come from that the Christian church never seems to talk about? You see that woman that Cain found was a woman that was already on the earth because they had other families on the earth. We must remember that Adam and Eve, their reproductive rate was expeditiously Herculean. They were in the preliminary stages of a fallen state. Today, we are well beyond the advanced stages of a fallen state. Genesis chapter 4 verse 1 says, Eve said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. So Eve was giving birth to grown men and women. Adam was already a grown man when the Most High created him. So Lord knows how many men and women were born from the union of Adam and Eve. And these people went their own way. Yeah, Cain was fearful for his life because other men were also the seed of Adam. And they learned that Cain brought a curse into the earth in killing their brother. God commanded Adam to replenish the earth because Satan was already cast into the earth. In Luke 10, 18, Christ said, I beheld Satan fall as lightning from heaven. Where did he fall to? Okay. And what did Satan begin to do? All right. He possessed the animals. That's how we get a talking serpent in Genesis chapter 3. Also, Adam and Eve were outside the time and space continuum when God said that. But that's a whole other video. OK, you don't progress through time in the sequence of events. All right. So children being born, men and women being born was not sequential. But that's a whole other complex issue. It so happened that Adam and Eve was a special group that the most high put together to make in his image and in his likeness the other people that was on the earth was not like the seed line of adam and eve which brings us to how most people really don't read most people don't read the bible to understand anything from adam and eve the whole world the whole earth was populated with all these different people of all these different nationalities they all came from adam and eve right 1 Corinthians 15.45 says, The first man, 
Adam became a living being. The last Adam, which is Christ, became a life-giving spirit. How much more clear can the word be? Adam was the first man, and sin came into the earth through him. So, to imply that there were other families already on the earth is heresy, because Christ made a one-time sacrifice to redeem us from one man's sin. And Eve is described as the mother of all living in Genesis chapter 3 verse 20. Our God will never have us lose track of where sin was initiated, especially since his judgment against sin is unfathomably indefinite. He is not the author of confusion. In fact, I think it shows how unlearned you are in the scriptures to even support polygyny. It's rather lazy to say, well, the patriarchs had multiple wives, so we should too. Nah, man. We're talking about 6,000 years of sin here. Sin is incredibly expensive and will always require sacrifice. So, generationally, polygyny has been sacrificed because of our tainted bloodlines mixed with the Gentiles. But I'll cover this in part two of this series.